You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. All across Wisconsin from Civic Media, this is Up North News Radio. Now, live from our Lake Wissota studio, here's the founding editor of Up North News, Pat Brightlow. Good morning. Welcome back to Up North News Radio, unabashedly Wisconsin, brought to you by Courier Newsroom and carried by our friends here on the Civic Media Radio Network. It's 7.06, and nice to have you here on this uh, Tuesday morning, September 24th, 2024. We are six weeks out from election day coming up this hour we'll have julie lassa back from usda rural development she's the state director the u.s department of agriculture is about so much more than just farming it's about rural america you know writ large and the rural economy and there are all kinds of investments that have been made over the decades but some of the largest are coming from the Biden-Harris administration here to rural Wisconsin. And Julie's going to walk us through some of the more recent examples. Chad Holmes will be along as well. And Brittany Merlot is standing by to give us the forecast. But first, get that Civic Media app ready and get ready to text the station here. You pick the station uh, where you can hear Up North News Radio. There are seven of them around the state. Because it's time for the green or gold text to win contest that we do four times a day, 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 4 p.m. You've got till the end of the hour to give us, text us this hour's keyword. Each one of those four times a day, we pick one entry statewide at random. The winner gets $100 cash or gold jewelry, depending on what's up for grabs at that hour. And of all the entries, there will be one grand prize winner getting a pair of indoor tickets to see the green and gold in Green Bay on Monday, December 23rd, against Nolens. So, get that Civic Media app ready. This hour's keyword is green, like the color, like G-R-E-E-N. Green is this hour's keyword. Text it through the Civic Media app, and you are in the running for some gold jewelry this hour as part of the Go for the Green or Gold contest. Meteorologist Brittany Merlot joins us now to... Tell us more about what is uh, yet another pleasant fall day. Uh, and, and fall would be operative, uh, as Rob tells us. Good morning from Tigerton. It's 47. Sun's coming up. I had a mowing job and had to wear a hoodie. But the sunshine felt good. He's got mowing jobs in Wittenberg today. And based on our music segment a minute ago, he says, Don't Worry, Be Happy was a popular song when he was working and staying in Green Bay in 1988. And when they opened the first 10-mile stretch of a four-lane Highway 29 in western Brown County, I remember that well. Could not wait for four-lane Highway 29 to be done. Uh, so, Brittany, yeah, it's it's hoodie season. It sure is. In fact, I'm in one right now, speaking of that, right? <laughs> Gotta uh, love Greg, it. Greg, shorts, shorts, shorts and T-shirt over there still, bud? Uh, I'm wearing shorts. Get over it. And uh, I'm wearing my... <laughs> Short sleeve. What's my the get over? Sh- well, and th- that's more for the people who are like, Greg, you need to put some pants on. Well, I have pants on. They're just <laughs> short pants. Uh, and I have my I have my short sleeve hoodie on. There Is that a go. short sleeve hoodie? It's a short sleeve hoodie. It's the best thing ever. Oh, my goodness. Okay. No way. Uh, that's pretty little, cool. A little chilly it's out like there for the Alicia. Who just- it's like the managers wear at, at the Brewers games. Yeah, it's, a, it's, got, it's, it's that Bill Belichick thing that he's got going on over there. All right. <laughs> I like oh, to dance. great. Got the moves. <laughs> He's got a little short sleeve hoodie <laughs> dance for us as well. Uh, do we st- do we stay in the hoodies for a while, or are we warming up here? I think short sleeve hoodie is the perfect perfect gear to wear right now because I, I think you, know, you right. need it in the morning, right? You want mm-hmm. the hoodie in the morning, but you don't really need it by the afternoon, and that's going to be the case again today. So, if you live further northwest, you're going to see a lot more sunshine today versus the southeastern parts of the state. It's going to be rainy, cloudy, and dreary over there as a low pressure system takes off from Illinois and slides through Michigan. So. 
by Lake Michigan, you're going to have a wet day. Otherwise, everybody else will see a ton of sunshine. Highs will be around 70 the further west you live and closer to 60 the further east you live today. But overall, a fantastic still fall-like feeling day today. We'll rise a little bit warmer tomorrow and then even more as we go into the weekend. That, of course, is that tropical cyclone, which is expected to turn into a hurricane, is actually going to make its way towards us by the weekend. So we're going to keep tracking that for you. Ooh, is that is that is that as they say in the Geico commercial? Is that the atmospheric river? Are we going to get Ooh. something like that? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, sounds like a is. band I don't want to listen to. <laughs> uh, do, do you know the commercial I'm talking about, where people, as they get older, they just start talking about the weather all the time? Yep. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just have one thing I want to say to Rob and Tigerton really quick. Yes, weather's getting cooler. You are wearing that hoodie, but you're still working. Still got to drink that water. There you go. Hydration is key. Exactly. And is that, did I, am I seeing right through my tiny screen here? Is that a Miami Beach sweatshirt that you've got yes. a hoodie? I know. They're I selling don't have the- hoodies in Miami Beach. Well, if <laughs> they don't they know are. how to cater to Northern tourists. No, actually, I, have you ever seen, uh, have you ever seen a Floridian in 55 to 60 degree weather? Oh, a park, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're right. That, that, that makes perfect sense. And, probably can get it at a discount that way all right Brittany. thank you so much have a great day thanks you too all right uh brewers were off yesterday they start a series in pittsburgh it's the final road series of the regular season uh the first pitch is at 540 the pregame is at 505 on civic media stations wrce and richland center wrn and racine kenosha wcqm in park falls and wiss in oshkosh so again, 5.05 pregame, 5.40 first pitch today and again tomorrow. But on Thursday, first pitch is at 11.35 in the morning. And then the Brewers come home for a three-game series against the New York Mets. And then it's off to the postseason. You can sign up for our unabashedly Wisconsin newsletter. Head over to upnorthnewswi.com. And when once you're there... Uh, you can click subscribe in the top banner. And among the stories that are there uh, today, something all about one of the best fall color spots, a 60-foot tower built on a bluff that puts you more than 250 feet above the canopy. So learn more details about Peninsula State Park coming up on uh, the Up North News Daily Newsletter. Again, head over to upnorthnewswi.com. There is a, a a birthday of note that I didn't have time to do in our, our last hour, but it's it's a, a true Wisconsin legend. And a lot of people probably don't don't know much about Dick Bong anymore. And they think the name is kind of funny if they go over the Dick Bong Bridge in Superior. But it's worth noting that Richard Bong, a Medal of Honor recipient, was born this day in 1920. Uh, He was one of the most decorated American fighter pilots. He was the country's top flying ace in World War II, credited with shooting down 40 enemy aircraft. Uh, He did it all with his Lockheed P-38 Lightning aircraft. Uh, Richard Bong grew up on a farm in Poplar where he became interested in aircraft at an early age. As he would watch planes fly over the farm, the planes were carrying mail for President Calvin Coolidge. A lot of folks don't remember anymore that Calvin Coolidge, his summer White House was in Superior. He said uh, the president spent his summers in Superior, getting out of the heat of Washington, D.C. Uh, young Dick Bong would see these airplanes, got interested, learned all about them, uh, started flying. Again, was a, uh, a tremendous air fighter. Uh, died in the late stages of the war in California while test flying a Lockheed P-80 jet fighter. Uh, so again, that was just at the age of 24, 25 years old, but wanted to make note uh, of his birthday uh, and the anniversary of a true Wisconsin legend. All right. Uh, as mentioned before in the headlines, former President Donald Trump is coming to Wisconsin this weekend. And... A lot of times we will tell you that Wisconsin getting attention from a a major presidential candidate of either party is a big deal. 
it's becoming increasingly less so, especially in this instance. And it's not just because of the saturation coverage, and maybe some people are actually getting tired of the election, you know, with only six weeks to go from today. But there's also nothing honorable about this upcoming visit for this reason. He didn't pick Prairie du Chien at random. In much the same way J.D. Vance picked Eau Claire recently, which is having a controversy about some people that don't want to welcome refugees to town, and Trump recently going to Howell, Michigan, which has been in the past a, a center of uh, Ku Klux Klan activity. Trump is coming to Prairie du Chien basically to say, we don't want another Springfield, Ohio. He's going to go on yet another anti-immigrant rant. Because in Prairie du Chien recently, there was a, um, a Venezuelan immigrant who was arrested for domestic violence and has ties to a, a gang there. As mentioned last week, I don't recall hearing this kind of attention for the thousands and thousands of other cases of domestic violence that, again, were cherry-picking something to fit a narrative. And the narrative is very simple to hear Donald Trump's speeches these days, that it's basically anybody who's not white and native born is not welcome. You had him at a uh, rally yesterday saying about Springfield and the legal Haitian uh, immigrants there that they, they all need to be sent back. And the crowd begins cheering, send them back, send them back. A as if their parents and great-grandparents didn't also struggle and come to a country for a new way of life and were similarly attacked for what they looked like and, and where they came from, not each of their individual capabilities. But that's what Trump's going to be talking about. And when he's not talking about immigrants, he's running anti-trans ads, and now so is Eric Hovde. And when they're not running anti-trans ads, uh, Trump is talking about tariffs with absolutely no true understanding of how tariffs work. Because if, if, well, he does. He knows how tariffs work. He's hoping that you, the voter, don't quite understand how tariffs work and that you hear the line about it being, it's a tax on a foreign country and it's going to raise us all this money and, and it's going to um, you know make our lives a lot easier. And it most decidedly is not. And I'm going to talk more about that on the other side of the break. But first, I'm going to remind you that, again, in our Go for the Green or Gold contest, the keyword this hour is green, like the color. So text that to us through the Civic Media app. And one note from the text line as well from Matt in Germantown was amazed when I talked to Sharita Booker an hour ago when I talked about eating too much of a Kringle and having to stop, you know, it starts off as this round letter O and pretty soon it's a letter C and it's getting smaller. And Matt writes in, you stop. My wife and I eat the entire thing, whether it be brownies or a Kringle, to which I I have no beef with that whatsoever, Matt. Uh, if, I, if I could get away with it, I would. More after this, you're up north. That's the title track to the uh, film of the same name, That Thing You Do, by Tom Hanks. The uh, track was written by Adam Schlesinger, bass player for Fountains of Wayne. It peaked at number 41 on the Billboard charts, and again released this day in 1996. Remember, you can sign up for the Up North News Daily Newsletter, upnorthnewswi.com. We're also doing uh, what I like to call our pledge break or pledge drive. Uh, once every quarter or so, we remind folks that uh, Up North News does not have a paywall, never will. And we'd love to have your support as well. You can head to the website, upnorthnewswi.com. Click subscribe for the newsletter. Click support if you'd like to support the work that we do over there. Well, it's, really, it, it's telling about Donald Trump when... The, the following two words lead a headline. Trump listens. <laughs> it caught my attention. Like, wait, he did what? It says Trump listens during a farming event in rural Pennsylvania. 
And the Associated Press story says uh, Donald Trump sat in a large barn in Pennsylvania on Monday asking questions of farmers and offering jokes, but in a rarity for his campaign events, mostly listening. The bombastic former president was unusually restrained at an event about China's influence on the U.S. economy, a roundtable during which farmers and manufacturers expressed concerns about losing their way of life. Well, it starts out that way. And the article points out that this is this is the listening session. There was a rally that followed, and the Donald Trump that we all know returned. But in between the two, after hearing all these farmers' concerns, he gave his, his standard answer that he has. And that's the other part of this headline. Trump listens during a farming event in rural Pennsylvania, then threatens John Deere with tariffs. Now, John Deere is, in fact, looking to move some of its manufacturing to Mexico. Trump threatened the company with a 200% tariff if he were to win back the presidency and if they were to try to export manufacturing to Mexico, which, again, on its face might sound attractive if that's all there was to it, that you're going to pay this penalty if you go. But... That's not how trade wars work. With, with trade wars, as we learned in Donald Trump's first presidency, you raise tariffs on their exports, they raise tariffs on ours. And it did tremendous damage, not just to farmers. Well, it did, it did damage to their export sales. It didn't do as much damage to farmers financially, but here's why. Donald Trump then sent them relief checks totaling $28 billion during his term for a trade war with China where the Wisconsin market for soybeans dried up. So did we make a point there? Or did we just add $28 billion to the national debt to make Trump feel good? There have been plenty of articles they would not be tough to find about the folly of trying to ignite another trade war rather than try to negotiate trade agreements that are fair for all parties involved. And Trump's taking it a step further in that he's talking about getting rid of the income tax and replacing it with tariffs which is how the United States operated about 200 years ago before there was, you know, manufacturing and much more of a global economy. We now have that global economy in place with plenty of opportunities for trade to go very well or to go very badly, as happened in the 1930s when Congress got all tariff happy and only made a depression that much worse. And here's the thing. How big would tariffs have to be to replace individual and corporate income taxes? Because right now, individual and corporate income taxes generates $2 trillion a year. Imagine tariffs so high to generate $2 trillion in revenue. How much higher would our prices be in the stores? Because tariffs, contrary to what Donald Trump tells people, tariffs aren't paid by the country. They're not the only ones who, who pay. That cost gets passed along to the consumer. And so let's say there's a TV set made in China, and now there's a 200% tariff on it. The price is going to go up. The logic is that, well, now you're going to buy an American-made one, except that TVs haven't been made in America in a long time. Sure, it could get us to start or restart an industry, like making TVs or making clothing or things like that, but then you know who'd have to take all those new, low-end manufacturing jobs? Yeah, the same immigrants that he wants to deport en masse. This is not an actual plan. It's not an actual working plan. But by the way, it's not the full extent of his plan. The full extent of his plan is to help the very wealthy. 
because right now you can make an income tax more progressive, meaning millionaires and billionaires could pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes than, say, you know, teachers and guys who work in a factory. You can make income taxes more progressive. You can make corporate taxes more progressive. But if you swap that out for tariffs, where do, where do the tariffs come from? Well, in Donald Trump's mind, they come from him, like right there where he just threatened John Deere. So what you've got is trading a fair system of taxes that you can always tweak with just giving some guy the power to decide on his own that this company or this industry is going to be punished with tariffs. Do you think he's going to punish millionaires and billionaires with higher taxes? Or do you think that once millionaires and billionaires have their individual taxes taken down substantially, the rest of us are going to make up the difference in higher prices because of tariffs and tariffs that Donald Trump chooses. He chooses who to punish. That's not a a way a democracy works in an economy. That's the way a strongman works, the way an authoritarian works. It's the way Donald Trump works. When he talks about tariffs, he's talking about being an authoritarian strongman. The same goes for having the power to deport millions of people, including legal immigrants. The man said he wanted to be a dictator on day one. Believe him already. We'll talk to Julie Lassa from USDA Rural Development about Biden-Harris investments in Wisconsin next. You're up north. You're listening to Civic Media. Find the latest news, information, and archives of all your favorite shows on the Civic Media website, civicmedia.us. Let's get into the details of a big move by the Biden-Harris administration for rural America. $7 billion for rural electric cooperatives to build a clean energy infrastructure, the largest investment in rural electrification since the New Deal. It's called the New Era Program, ERA standing for Empowering Rural America. Including private partnership investments, it's a nearly $30 billion boost to the rural economy. And we're joined once again by our friend Julie Lassa, the State Director for USDA Rural Development for Wisconsin. Julie, how are you? I am doing well. I have all of my computer uh, glitches and bugs hopefully fixed. And uh, hopefully it'll be a good rest of the day. Oh, I, I'm sure that that it will be. Uh, Julie and I served in the state Senate together. Now she works for USDA Rural Development, which let's let's go back as we often do uh, and do a quick square one on rural development because people hear USDA and they think that's all about farms and farming. But USDA Rural Development plays a, a, a big role in the full rural economy. Uh, so tell us more about what rural development does. Yeah, so real quick elevator pitch for us. Uh, rural development is housed within USDA. We have over 70 different uh, programs that uh, span from helping low and moderate, uh, low and very low income uh, folks purchase their first home, uh, potentially make uh, renovate an existing home that they have, uh, especially if they need a new roof, water heater, that type of thing. Um, we help communities purchase fire trucks, police vehicles, maybe replace their town hall, renovate their public library. Um, and then we also help with, um, let's see, uh, high-speed internet, uh, electricity uh, for co-ops, and then also uh, we have our business and cooperative services. And there we uh, help either communities themselves uh, put together a revolving loan fund um, to help with business improvements in their area. Or we can work with small and mid-sized companies themselves if they're looking to expand. Um, and they can be in agriculture or they don't have to be. They just have to be located in a rural community. And so sometimes we do, do a lot. Sometimes it's it's financial, but sometimes it's a matter of connecting uh, people to resources or uh, groups right. or businesses, uh, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, there's a lot. And for people going, well, wait, why why are they doing all that in the rural areas? Just again, I think the base model that everybody comes back to is electricity. 
there was not going to be electricity in rural America for a very long time until some folks said this is something the federal government can do for areas that otherwise can't do it on their own and make them full partners in the national economy. And the same goes for all these other ways to boost the rural economy, which, uh, again, hey, we all appreciate, you know, Milwaukee, Madison, Eau Claire, Green Bay, but you don't take care of rural Wisconsin, uh, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're screwing over the whole state's economy. We're all right. in this together. We are. And uh, rural communities are the backbone, not only of uh, Wisconsin, but of the rest of the country. And the last time I heard people like to eat, uh, yes. their food comes from uh, farms. Most of those are located in rural areas. Um, and just like you alluded to, I mean, it was FDR and the New Deal that brought uh, electricity to rural communities, as you said, you know, that wasn't going to happen uh, without uh, the New Deal and the Rural Electrification Act. And the exciting announcement that President Biden made in Westby, Wisconsin, uh, last week is the largest uh, investment that's been made in uh, rural electrification since the New Deal. Um, and that was done in 1936. So it's it's really exciting. And this is all for uh, clean, renewable energy um, that will help cut the costs of electricity uh, for uh, one out of five rural residents, um, according to the, the announcement that was made and the uh, co-ops that are participating in it. It's really exciting to see that, that type of investment being made. I recall when we were both in the state Senate and it was in that 2007, 8, 9 realm. And as we were having discussions about, you know, renewable energy goals and the big utilities were already moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. The rural cooperatives in Wisconsin and elsewhere were saying, well, not so fast. We, we don't have their kind of resources. We've been relying on train loads of coal coming in from, you know, Wyoming and, and other places. And it's going to take a lot for us to, to get modernized into wind and solar. Well, again, that's where fast forward to today, it's taken some time, but by providing these kind of investments from the Biden-Harris administration, you know, through USDA rural development, through uh, mm -hmm. the investments and in cooperatives and everything else, that's what's finally taking, you know, this, this big step toward more renewable sources of energy from all players in Wisconsin, rural as well as urban. Right. And in that, I mean, the um, private utilities, uh, they uh, had a built in advantages like tax credits and things like that. But the co-ops were really at a disadvantage. Um, and so by uh, making the investments that President Biden announced um, last week, it really helps to put them at a more level playing field so that they can make those investments. So in terms of like with Dairyland Power, um, the, with what New Era allows them to do uh, is that they're getting a grant and loan funding of nearly $573 million. And what that means for co-op members, whether they're individuals or businesses or farmers, um, it's Dairyland's electric rates are estimated to be 42% lower over 10 years than they would have been without the New Era funding. And uh, because of the investment that the federal government is making in them, it will also leverage um, a total investment of $2.1 billion um, because that is what Dairyland Power is going to be investing in order to build out um, uh, for solar installations, for wind power installations, and then they're also going to be putting in place eight power purchasing agreements. Um, so it's exciting. And when I was at the event um, 
I had a chance to talk with the head of the operating engineers union. And he said, because of investments like the, the new era uh, that was announced for Dairyland last week and the other infrastructure investments made under the Biden Harris administration, they were, are going to be able to and have brought on over 1000 new apprentices in Wisconsin. Those are good paying union jobs. Um, and those folks then, um, they go out and they purchase homes or they're able uh, to make other purchases. And that just continues to benefit the local economy as that that uh, ripples out. So it's really exciting to see this type of investment being made, um, not only through New Era, but through the other infrastructure investments that this administration has made in Wisconsin and across rural America. Well, let's talk about some of those other investments across uh, rural Wisconsin. Uh, Julie Lassa is our guest from USDA Rural Development. She's the state director for that. And so let's start with something that is uh, thought of more in the traditional USDA vein. Let's go over to Plum City, uh, where yeah. over the summer, there, there was um, assistance provided, uh, $1.5 million as part of the meat and poultry processing expansion pro uh, program. It's something we've talked about a lot on this program because everybody understood, you know, th they learned the phrase supply chain issues. And they learned about how basically it's four big companies control just an insane amount of all the, the meat production in this country. And maybe it's a better idea to be more supportive of more smaller, more local places. And there's all kinds of potential here in Wisconsin. So this Plum City one is, is one example of how uh, USDA Rural Development and other parties can come together to give us what? A more diverse meat processing food supply chain? Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, people can remember uh, during uh, the pandemic when the not only was there not enough toilet paper on the store shelves, but they were also having a hard time uh, being able to purchase uh, the food that they needed to put on um, their family table. And that really uh, the the weakness there was highlighted during the pandemic because you had farmers who wanted to be able to ship their hogs uh, to the meat packing plants, but because of how the, the meat packing plants were situated, uh, the, the hogs were too big to fit uh, into the processing through their system. And so those pigs had to be euthanized. Uh, and you had people who couldn't buy uh, pork uh, and other meat products uh, in the grocery stores. So it showed the weakness there. And when you had President Biden and Vice President Harris come, come in along with Secretary Vilsack, uh, they identified this as a weakness, came up with the meat and poultry processing expansion uh, program uh, to strengthen the American uh, food supply chain and to invest money in uh, to increase independent meat and poultry processing uh, capacity. And we were fortunate in Wisconsin to have uh, some of uh, the awards here. And as you said, one was to J.M. Watkins in Plum City. Uh, they are going to be um, putting putting up, constructing a new meat processing facility. When we were there, we took a, a, a tour of the existing one. And, um, you know, what's great is that they're going to be able to add uh, 16 new employees as well as serve an additional 36 uh, new producers. So uh, in that way, they're able to ripple out and um, impact that market. And when we see awards like that throughout the United States, uh, it really goes to help um, strengthen our, our food supply. And I know here in Wisconsin, um, Governor Evers, as well as DATCAP Secretary Randy Romanski are doing similar uh, things at the state level. So there is a recognition that there is a need and um, USDA and DATCAP have stepped forward to, to be able to do that. So, I mean, to, to sum it all up, Julie, there is just no shortage of, of areas where you and I, through these visits, get to let people know 
what a difference is being made in right. rural Wisconsin bit by bit. They don't get the big glitzy headlines. They don't have the big, you know, high circulation newspapers. But if, if you live in that particular zip code, this, these things are a big deal. They make a big deal. And just like, you know, uh, the um, Lafayette, uh, the Memorial Hospital in Lafayette County in Darlington. I mean, that is a big deal. We are helping them uh, replace a outdated uh, hospital. Uh, they are a critical access hospital. And then uh, the new con- new hospital that's currently under construction. Um, and that is going to make a big difference in terms of People being able to continue to receive high quality uh, health care within the Darlington community as well as the surrounding area. Um, and it's really impressive what they're doing there. And that could not have been done uh, without uh, the assistance of rural development. So we, we do a lot. And uh, it's an opportunity for me to, to be on your show to get our to really tout what we do at Rural Development, because this administration has made our rural communities and the people who live there and do business there a priority. And uh, a lot of the times they are using rural development uh, and USDA to be able to do that. Exactly. And again, you can Google uh, Wisconsin Rural Development, or if you really, really need a website, what it'll take you to first <laughs> off is, is RD for Rural Development, rd.usda.gov slash WI. Julie Lassa, State Director for USDA Rural Development for Wisconsin. Always great to connect with you. Look forward to getting another update on all your progress real soon. Hey, that sounds great. Wisconsin's right. going to be a hive of activity and we look forward to covering it with you. We don't know how not to be. All right. Thanks, Julie. Have a great day. (laughs) You too. And we'll be back with more right after this. You're up north. Chad Holmes from 98.9 WXCO is coming up next in the Wausau area or listen through the Civic Media app. And hey, while you're at the Civic Media app, why don't you text us the word green right now? It's part of the Go for the Greener Gold contest. And you got till the end of the hour to uh, be in the running for some jewelry and uh, maybe a grand prize. Uh, some tickets to see the Green and Gold play in Green Bay. Tomorrow on the program, we'll have the superintendent from the Alma Center Humbird, Maryland School District talking about their plans to add a child care center. Uh, But there's also a referendum that would need to pass to have that happen, though they have found a creative way to get about half the construction paid for. So we'll have details on that tomorrow. Mr. Holmes, I, I begin our visit with some sad news. I mentioned in the last hour that the last traditional full service Kmart store was closing out in New York State. But I've also learned that now what we used to know as Schwann's is ceasing operations after 72 years. Now it's called yellow or yellow, but uh, we no longer get those yellow trucks coming into our driveways, bringing uh, dinners and treats to us. I, were you ever a Schwann's customer? I, I remember the Schwann's. I'm sure I have had the Schwann's and, and Kmart. I mean, you talk about, you know, here in the, Wausau. I mean, I still drive past on Grand Avenue and uh, there's like an apartment complex now, but that was always the Kmart for like 20, 25, 30 years. And you see a lot of these types of businesses going away. And and again, it just shows that the change that occurs. And I I think it's not always the best kind of change because Mm -hmm. we see a lot of what you call the mega corporations that are taking over. And again, it's, it shows the difficulty. I think that that all elected officials have. If you're just going to be there to kind of make time, you're going to see all this kind of stuff to slide right on by. But it's the people like Julie Lasso you're just talking about. I was just saying to you, back in the day, like 20, 25 years ago, I was working in Stevens Point. I'd cover news and I'd go to events with Julie Lasso and she was just a wonderfully hardworking mm-hmm. uh, state legislator and somebody that was very much you know, out there in terms of, uh, of doing the job. And I think now more than ever, we need people that are doing the job because all of a sudden you just see these these businesses that are you know staples of of our community slipping away 
<laughs> when you talk about you know working with Julie, you know, 20, 25 years ago, and I'm sure she rolls her eyes much the same way that I did a couple of days back. Uh, saw somebody was getting some work done, and he I, again, I got to hear those infamous words. Oh, I watched you on TV when I was a kid. Mm. I'm like, great, great, thanks a lot, appreciate that. What was his hair like? What was his hair like? <laughs> I, was, I remember hearing you when I was a oh, kid. <laughs> oh gosh, that reminds me. I was gassing up yesterday at uh, Fleet Farm, uh, picking up some flannel shirts, and uh, <laughs> and this guy goes, uh, "You're the guy from uh, up north Wisconsin." And as I looked, and as he was saying it, he he had a flannel shirt, he had a close cropped gray beard, he had glasses. The voice wasn't matching, but he looked just enough like Derek Van Orden. That when he said you're the guy from up north wisconsin i thought oh uh oh this could this could go wrong and i'm like yeah and then i could tell it wasn't actually it's was just somebody who kind of resembled him and he's like really like the work that you guys do and i'm like oh good thank you very much otherwise i would have had a totally different story <laughs> about Derek van orden accosting me in a parking lot I, I i think it's unfortunate now that i would be able to see Derek van orden and uh, recognize him at site because uh, i'm seeing a lot of his commercials here in the wasa yes area. yes but the good news is as opposed to two years ago when I saw a lot of Derek Van Orden commercials in the run-up to the election. We're also seeing Rebecca Cook out there quite a bit and did not see that two years no. ago. And that turned no, out to be a not. very big mistake uh, for the Democrats. Right. And uh, now I'm going to try to remedy that situation here in six weeks' time. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so the, the statement from uh, Yellow Schwanz uh, says they blame external headwinds such as the nationwide labor shortage, food supply chain disruption, and changing consumer lifestyles as digital shopping has replaced the personal at-the-door customer interaction that was the hallmark of the company. And I can't help, and I, I have invoked this before. I don't know if you've seen the, the Pixar, Disney Pixar cartoon WALL-E, the movie, but there's a big old giant company there called By and Large. And I always think of Amazon every time I see that, that basically by and large essentially ran the planet and screwed things up so much that the whole Earth's population had to go live in outer space. And I think we, we once had like, you know, door to door delivery of food and you could go to the local Kmart or Sears, Mr. Bach. I, I, I don't ever like to see a, any business go out of business for business. Uh, and Schwann's is definitely a you know, tradition here in Wisconsin, at least. But all those yeah. reasons sound very like supply chain. People don't want to work and Amazon. Well, all right. Did you also maybe not adjust your business model for the changing times? I don't know. I'm that's not, that. I'm not no, that's critique, actually just, where, <laughs> that's I, was thinking, where I was going to yeah. go next. I was going to uh, say was, copy and paste. Copy. Yes. And paste. I mean, that, well, that statement's been put out a lot of times. I was going to invoke uh, Kmart and sears and tony writes in don't worry leon musk is on it pat thanks tony very much appreciate that but that uh, as i've said before kmart and sears uh, and others they didn't have to necessarily go out of business they didn't adjust they're, they're looking at what amazon's doing amazon started as a little stupid bookstore yeah. you know they made the adjustments there might have been some anti-competitive practices in there too but yeah there, there's always reason greg your point's extremely well taken they could have they could have adjusted and didn't yeah. so uh mr holmes however has adjusted with the circumstances and that's why he's you know rapidly becoming the king of wausau media <laughs> and tells us what's coming up next what are you talking about today uh later in the program i'm gonna have uh, your old buddy kirk bankstead on the show they ah. they got some uh go, get out the vote extravagandas going on yes. in the state of wisconsin this weekend one of which is in wausau uh, coming up on friday so we're going to talk a little bit about what to expect for folks that are going out on on friday to sylvan hill to uh see that gotv uh, extravaganza so yes i spoke at their eau claire event uh, last week so um yeah kirk puts on a, a good show as always so all right thank you chad and uh, Greg's back in two hours for Matt and Air on Air. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for being part of it. Up North News is the Wisconsin outlet for Courier, a pro-democracy news network building a more informed, engaged, and representative America. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Up North. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. 
Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 